Hi everyone, this is Tony Zhong, the CEO of Instant Nail Biosensors. We're excited to launch the uh, in-AV service, which is based on our unique and patent FOPR technology. The in-AV service, which is defined two service, one is the in-AV biomarker analysis, there is the in-AV biomarker detection. For the in um, biomarker analysis, including four parts, one the limit of the detection, and the limit, linear dynamic range, and also the affinity uh, capability, and also the based on our NAB um, affinity database to the analysis. And the, the other part is a detection, uh, which is the, about the analyte quantification measurement, and also the uh, low concentration protein uh, detection. Uh, let's us uh, to introduce more about the, our FOPR technology. FOPR technology also is the fiber optical pa particle plasma resonance. And it has over 13 technical publications. And it has been developed, it's a very mature and uh, uh, well known um, development and, and uh, technology. And this uh, FOPR technology is based on the optical fiber coding with a nail gold particle. And this nail particle code with immobile with the antibody. So the ones the light pass through inside the optical fiber and the analy um, flows through into the microfluidy and uh, um, has an interaction with the antibody, and we can detect the uh, intensity intensity change. On uh, this technology and the, the product has is the world's first uh, combined optical fiber nail technology and also microfluidy and uh, is a revolution um is not only for the detection but also have a capability from the laboratory for the research and develop those biomarker and to the clinical to do the monitoring and diagnostic and uh, now it has over uh, 13 global patents. This year we have a uh, new patents and the uh, patents uh, are divided to six family and and uh, are distributed in UK, US, uh, mainland China and Taiwan. Now have about over 20 uh, uh, leading publications. Now this year we have uh, three more application uh, publications. Uh, to talk about uh, more about which customer that we target, one is the uh, biomarker analysis, which is a customer that uh, in the field of the uh, uh, developer antibody drug and also in the field uh, in the field of the uh, in vitro diagnostic and focused on the antibody and the antigen, and also the customer that is um, under the vaccine develop, and also do the um, biomarker research and develop. Uh, once these um, biomarker analysis, so the some of the our client that work in the uh, uh, research institute and hospital clinical uh, inst institute and also the biotech company, also, also the pharmaceutical company, and uh, the, the same developed company. And once these uh, uh, develop the um, define the biomarker, they will apply to the to do the detection. For example, like diagnostic, monitoring, and the many different kind of uh, applications. And first, we talk about the biomarker analysis. Uh, why we need what biomarker analysis before the immunoassay? As we know that uh, when we do the biomarker assays, there's a lot of works. As we know that it's always a waste time, and uh, uh, when runs a lot of the samples, we were thinking. And um, I have a um, best specificity or best uh, sensitivity, and uh, may I have, uh, have a good uh, limit uh, of the range? And also, it's not uh, pretty sure the um, interaction of the antibody and the antigen there, um, and the affinity capability. And also, the when they go to the downstream, they say that um, I pick up the wrong uh, detection methods. Um, just back to um, our regular, regular, regularly uh, laboratory works, as we were quite familiar with the those nuclear acid, uh, especially on the next generation sequencing. Uh, we also know that when we uh, apply to next generation sequencing, that uh, 
we might do the nuclear acid analysis to do the quant quant uh, quant uh, quality control and to understand more about the information of the size, fragment, and the concentration. Because that we would like to have a very good a result and a reproducibility the, um, after the uh, NGS product. But do we have any um, very good tool to apply the uh, biomarker or like a, a protein assay? Maybe some of the uh, customers that might say yes, but uh, we are not um, you usually use that before we do the downstream biomarker assays. As we know, the, the idea is quite easy. When we do the um, good in AB antibody precision to do the good um, protein analysis that will help us to have a good result. And we have a cost saving and time saving because the, for the lots of the clinical samples that first when we run through all the experiment that we have a bad result and then we will back to see our uh, antibody or antigen reactive uh, uh, situation that we might say, wow, I picked up the wrong uh, match of the antibody and uh, antigen. And or I picked up the wrong assay. So I took a lot of time and waste a lot of clinical sample to do the assay develop. So our licensing biomarker analyzing and also in AB services is helping our client to have a high sensitivity down to fentanyl ground per milliliter and with a, a good um, four linear uh, dynamic range and also with the, to detect the affinity and also the specificity. It's all based on a four per technology and our um, specific in-chip technology. So we need a biomarker analyzer before the immunization, but how um, do we get this in AB service? It's quite easy. Uh, just provide your antibody and the uh, analyze and also uh, the, the convention that you run through the ELISA before. So just then our scientists tend to know um, your um, pre, um, um, like the premier data or you have this kind of the uh, assay before. So we first we get, um, your antibody will immobilize onto our fiber sensor. And then we flew through the analyte, which is uh, uh, antigen. And you can, as you can see, it, it is a real time signal. So once you immobilize it, your antibody will also can see and the immobility um, is good or bad. And after we for sure that every um, antibody immobilization is good, then we will go to the downstream assay uh, to do the analyte detection. Just a very quick uh, example for you to know. Uh, normally these that uh, we will pick up like one antibody or uh, two uh, antibody for the, these in AB service to pick up the best of the uh, uh, antibody and also to uh, familiar with and get those uh, affinity data. So for this example that we have two uh, different antibody and with a same analog. So first we immobilize um, our uh, antibody one and also antibody two uh, onto our fiber sensor. And then the, we flew through the same analog. Once these flew through and we can have the um, analysis data, uh, as you can see, the antibody one shows the is better affinity and also the uh, good interaction than antibody two. So um, the 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 each in AB service that we were um, established uh, the in curve, uh, which with the five different points with a different concentration, and then um, based on these five different analyzes, we can. Um, give you the analysis of the data is on the limit of detection and also the limit uh, linear dimension and also the ability, uh, ability. And also um, if your um, biomarker has, uh, uh, we have a database that can help him to position um, is your uh, antibody uh, biomarker match is good or not or not. And we'll give you the such these kind of a good service data for you to then to know. And then the other thing, uh, just a very quick example for you. 
um, when we uh, select one of the antibody and um, we call the, the, the TNA alpha, and we uh, to have the five different concentrations that have, have uh, in curve. And after that, that we know that it's not only the limit of the detection, but also the limit of the direct range. And then we use the same five uh, um, points of the raw data uh, applied to our uh, in-data analysis that we can get the uh, association and dissociation uh, data. So um, just a little background information to introduce. Um, what is the affinity ability? As, as we know, the uh, uh, Ka, uh, someone said the Kn is the uh, association, is how fast the molecule bind, bind together. And the Kd, and also called the Ko, is a dissociation. It means that how fast complex fall apart. Uh, okay, so that means that um, if we um, understand um, the k on and k off, then we'll have the affinity data and then to know which kind of the match of the biomarker is best. Normally, um, it's based on the class one that we will, that we will choice, uh, choose for the downstream ACEs. For example, like uh, we compare the um, different antibody. Um, the antibody one is the anti system, the antibody two is the ABK antibody. And then they have a same analyzed uh, uh, analyte antigen is the anti system. You might say it, it is an unfair uh, game, right? Uh, anti system antibody should have a better result with the anti system of the antigen. And uh, ABK is not the same match. So it might have a bad result, but let's go uh, downstream um, experiment to go to see the more information. After we do the five points different um, in um, curve established, so we have the K on and K off uh, uh, data and also uh, get the affinity uh, data. Then we uh, use the um, three dimension to analyze um, these two antibodies. And we position that. Um, uh, we find out the antibody um, ABK2 actually it has a good match and good um, affinity ability than the RD system. So, as you can see, the RD system um, is located on the class two. So, of course, we first will cho choose the class one and ABK antibody for the downstream acid. But there's a very interesting part just to let you to know. Uh, on this system, um, when we um, see their um, KA, which is the specificity capability, we see that he is, uh, has a high K on value than uh, ABK. But the on this system has a very bad, uh, uh, a little bit uh, small uh, uh, stability. But if a uh, scientist uh, to change, the buffer system, and this might have a, a, a opportunity to move the class one because that become the best um, match of the antibody and antigen and also better than the ABK. And this is the first part. And second part, when we compare with our in affinity database, and then we will see the very interesting thing is the, actually that we got the very good um, AB can uh, uh, match is better than the uh, the rest of the, the other uh, affinity of the antibody. Yeah. So we have a different couple of example just then to know. When we compare the different brand of the IgG um, anti-mouse and to the IgG uh, Merck, and we find a very interesting part. Um, actually, um, Based on the curve, that we might can see the um, these kind of the curve that we'll see which one is the best. But when we use these these uh, database analysis and position that we find out these two match is not good for the downstream ASA. You may say how come? Because a lot of the scientists uh, they just follow the uh, a paper, they just follow the laboratory, they just follow the maybe the uh, uh, doctors uh, then you then then to know 
to pick up the antibody uh, and then to just following to do the downstream assay. But once they process the uh, downstream assay, they just uh, realized it is not, the, the result is not good. So they were back to see the antibody and antigen is not the, the good result. And uh, what kind of sample type that we can apply? There's a uh, uh, many different kind of sample type uh, from the uh, one KD to the maybe large than uh, uh, like hungry kill Dalton. This molecule can apply this in AB service. But at this moment, uh, to speed up those uh, in, in AB service that we received the is over 10 uh, kill Dalton. Um, biomarker that can apply to the in AB service. For the, uh, the other ACEs like DNA or very um, like small molecule that we have a special project that uh, we can discuss with our scientists. And uh, um, once we uh, focus on the um, uh, biomarker analysis and to do the antibody precision to um, understand the mesh data of that, and we position that, that we can easy to apply and to do the downstream assay. For example, like ELISA, Western Bra, or to pick up like a, a rapid test, this kind of the detection assay. Of course, our um, technology also have the licensing POCT. If you're interested in this part, please contact us. And then once we uh, position this analysis, then we talk more about how to do the detection. Uh, before they would talk more about the detection and the low data performance, um, let us start to introduce. Uh, this year we have uh, three leading uh, publications. And uh, at this moment, based on this full technology, so over 20 um, leading publications. So then there's a many, uh, for example, like with a different biomarker, with a DNA, with a different uh, small molecule. So that's what, um, uh, the leading population that are already published. And to talk more about the, how to do the detection, um, let me introduce uh, the two um, major uh, detection way. Um, of course, we have uh, many, but uh, let me, just let me to introduce the, for the in-AB service, what we uh, regularly do. One is the de direct detection assay. What is a direct detection assay? Um, the idea is quite simple, just like what we do. Uh, we use the narrow go particle and the, uh, actually it's a, um, um, already coded with the uh, fiber sensor. So you just, um, um, customer just need to send um, your antibody and also analyze the uh, antigen to our service site. And we were helping to immobilize that and also to do the um, uh, interaction. Uh, just a very uh, um, example, and also these uh, paper already published for you to know. Uh, we do these the, like a TNA farfar and to detect the um, a cytokine and use the uh, needs food to get the um, analysis and also the detection data. So first we will have the several um, in curve uh, to do the. Uh, uh, Standard curve, and then we apply an um, encoding um, uh, using uh, TNA FAFA to detect the those uh, biomarker inside the NIST pool, right? So, as you can see, the red line is mentioned about the conventional ELISA. Uh, the conventional ELISA, as you know, it took a lot of time and took a lot of the complex step, and, and also the um, is that uh, is waste the time and. Uh, with a, um, just a, a stable, a stable uh, performance. But when these kind of same molecule of the biomarker apply to our full technology, uh, with the in um, AB service, then you can see we have a ball range of the um, dynamic range and also we have a, a lower uh, detection limit. And uh, the other uh, same uh, uh, needs through and detect with an MMP3, it also uh, indicate the, the ray conventional ELISA is, has a narrow ELISA and also uh, our NAB service are uh, based on our focal technology with a ball range of the uh, detection range and also with a lower detection uh, limit. 
Um, some of the scientists that might ask, uh, uh, do you provide a service is helping us to detect um, the uh, lower sensitivities down to like a pickle ground or even then uh, down to phantom ground per milliliter. Yeah, we do have these kind of services and do and do have these kind of technology. We call it the enhancement assay. You might say that it's a little like ELISA. Um, yes, it looks like the ELISA and sandwich assay, but um, with the total idea of the ELISA of the sandwich, but the, with a total different performance, it's become the more high um, accuracy and high um, uh, sensitivity. As you can see, we call the um, antibody one, um, onto our fiber sensor directly, and also um, the second antibody code with the nail particle and detect with the analyte. Once this sandwich be done, there has a, a very unique part is the high sensitivity, uh, high specificity, and also provide the um, uh, high accuracy outcome. And one of the very exciting publications, just for you to know, this is a, a top one journal is called the biosensor and also bioelectronics. And if just then a uh, customer to know to apply the truly clinical test, um, can detect the PCT in Syria and down to Fendelblum per milliliter. So if the uh, scientist or kind of biotech company would like to apply the analysis uh, down to uh, detection down to Fendelblum per milliliter, please um, uh, come to us and uh, have a more discussion about that. And it's an honor to introduce this technology. And we believe light can save life through our licensing biomarker analyzer. Thank you very much. Thank you for your um, uh, listening.